I am frankly thrilled to see all of you here tonight. We had no idea um, from the RSVPs how many people were going to come. So um, this is a wonderful um, sized crowd, and the weather for once this month has prevailed in our favor. <laughs> I don't need to tell anybody here that this has not been a particularly good month for doing outdoor events. Um, so I have rescheduled three events uh, <laughs> that were outdoors before until June. So our May Preservation Month this uh, year is called May-June Preservation Month. <laughs> So if you haven't had a chance to attend any of our uh, events and would like to, I encourage you to do that um, in, uh, from the middle to the end of June. So um, good evening. I want to welcome you to the 24th um, ceremony here that we have for the Annual Preservation Awards Program. Uh, this is something that, um, if you don't already know me, um, I, and I know a lot of you out here, my name is Brandon Wilson, and I'm the Executive Director for the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, this is our actually uh, eighth time in actually holding this award ceremony at the Somerville Armory, and it's a pretty grand place, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know how many have been here and uh, know anything about the history, but I'm going to share just a little bit because we're pretty proud of it. Um, and it's very unique space to have here in Somerville. Uh, the, basically, it's known as Arts at the Armory, the space that we're in. The whole building is known as the Armory, but this is a separate part. And I wanted to share how it came to be. Um, the building was constructed in 1903, and it's hard to believe, but this um, particular building used to house the Somerville Light Infantry of the Massachusetts Volunteer Militia. And after that, the Massachusetts National Guard. And you can just see where the horses might have come in, right? Um, then it was only periodically used um, primarily for government functions, and including the local office of the 1980 National Census. Uh, so those of you that might have lived in the city for a while, you might have actually come here. Uh, the state of Massachusetts declared it as a surplus property, and they sold it by auction in 2004. The two brothers, um, actually, who own the Middle East restaurant in Cambridge, bought this huge structure, and they formed a development team to create a mixed-use building. And among the several uses, it serves as a community arts center, and it offers wonderful cultural programming and gathering space, as you can see. And not only for the city of Somerville, um, but for the whole Boston metropolitan area. Um, the diversity of happenings that occur here um, are pretty amazing, and they range from the indoor winter farmer's market, which just ended, fortunately they've gone outside, to the flea market, um, and beer festivals, and wedding parties, and political fundraisers, um, and citywide public uh, meetings, and charrettes, and all kinds of special events. Um, a variety of classes also happen here. And they also range quite a bit. Um, and there's dance, and there's music, and there's a full setup for teaching um, parkour even here in the building for children and adults, and people that want to do parkour over 50, in fact, if you're interested. Um, so the development team for the Armory Project worked with our office, and they did a terrific job in restoring everything um, uh, that was significant here and preserving many of the building's significant features. Um, architecturally, and that includes the interior stairwells, um, the turrets on the exterior, and as well as the entry doors and the windows. And um, when you entered, you might have noticed that um, they saved the drawbridge-like ramp um, into the front lobby. That's not a, an, uh, a, a, an incidence, I mean, or a coincidence. Um, in fact, they did that so well that um, they actually gave them an award for what they did here, a director's award, um, just like some of you are getting tonight in 2009. So it's really good to see all of you here tonight. Um, I recognize a number of you because um, you're very active in the Somerville community, um, as am I, and I know you're coming from different um, places beside being property owners that are being honored here tonight, and a lot of you are involved in civic functions in the city and, and other um, active contributions that you make, so thank you for coming. Um, tonight, we're, the whole purpose is to formally thank you um, for one of your most recent city contributions and the wonderful work that you've done on your property um, or on your artwork if you're a student here. So some of you are actually historic property owners, and at some point you have therefore come before the commission. 
And, um, but for those of you that have not, and those are the people that are winning the director awards, and of course the students, um, I'd like to um, explain a little bit about what the commission is and, and who they are and its mission. And the commission is comprised of 14 members. Um, they're all volunteers, and they offer their time and expertise freely. Um, they include architects, historians, uh, contractors, realtors, and people who simply have a strong interest in local history and architecture. A few of the commission members are here tonight, and they've worn even a name tag, but if you haven't noticed it, I'm gonna ask them to raise their hands so they can be identified. So Mark and Robin and Alan and <laughs> Ryan. Okay, um, so great. Um, they're all really busy, so I appreciate you all coming again tonight as well. Um, we also have the um, benefit of two full-time staff, and those of you that have come before the commission are probably aware of them because they work with the property owners, um, and, the, and if you're making alter, exterior alterations to your property, and that's Sarah White and Christy Chase, neither of whom could be here tonight. Um, but the commission is just so um, delighted that you all could come and share in what we consider a truly uh, Somerville community event. And several communities in Massachusetts, um, you may have heard, actually do an award ceremony, but we feel that like, this is the much more encompassing one than any of the others that, that are out there. And the reason for that is because this program occurs all year long, it's not just tonight, and it involves people from all walks of life uh, in here in Somerville. Um, and these people include high school students, as you can see tonight, uh, residential property owners, local businesses, municipal and state officials, teachers, and local reporters. Um, the wider public also benefits from this program through watching cable television, by reading interviews in the local media, um, and by coming to the final exhibit of the drawings that are going to follow this ceremony uh, over the coming summer and winter months. So I, I should let you know that this um, ceremony tonight is being videotaped, so that's how their people are gonna be able to watch it on um, cable TV. If you don't have cable TV, don't worry. The city is now in the 21st century, and we have um, on the Preservation Commission's website a video section, so I encourage you all to go to there, and then you can see this ceremony as well as prior ones, um, in addition to a lot of other I call fascinating um, videos, <laughs> the walking tours we've done and things like that. So just a little bit of background about how this program actually happens and how we got here to this point tonight, um, as well as how many people's lives are actually touched by the program. So um, it begins the awards program in the fall, um, and that's when the Historic Preservation Commission members um, and its staff um, start to look at the properties throughout the city um, that have been worked on. And it's generally, we look only over the last two years. Um, and we consider those cases that have come before the commission, which are what the preservation award properties are, because they're designated historic properties. Um, and we also seek nominations from neighbors, owners, the general public, and especially from real estate agents, because they travel around so extensively um, and have keen eyes for work that's being done. Um, we publicize the opportunity to nominate a property uh, via notices in the local newspaper, on cable television, direct mailings, and sometimes stop by the property. And some people are familiar with me ringing the doorbell and asking them when you did your work. <laughs> Um, so for the past 23 years, we have actually been working closely with um, the CAD teachers and students in Somerville High School. CAD basically stands for the Computer Assisted Drafting Program. It's a part of the pre-engineering program at Somerville High. Unfortunately, the state apparently has changed the standards, the educational standards for the curriculum this last year, and so they're no longer able to fit this into the schedule that they have, which is pretty intense. So for the first time in 23 years, the CAD student and their drawings are not here tonight. We're hoping that's gonna change over time because they were in a wonderful um, enhancement of the program. But this year, we do have the benefit of the arts program um, at Somerville High, and those of you that don't have a student there or are a student there, it's a terrific department and some wonderful teachers there. So we're thrilled that um, a number of them have chosen to participate in this program, and you'll hear shortly from one of them in particular. Uh, the commission's mission is to involve um, any of the high school students um, in, this, in the uh, and the high school that, that can be interested in order to sort of open their eyes to what we would call the more 
unique and um, older uh, architectural features of the properties in the city. Um, I think for many of you that have worked on your properties, you're well familiar that one of the charms that they have is the craftsmanship that goes into these properties that um, is no longer being replicated in newer developments, typically. And there's some exceptions. Um, so we want to encourage not only you as owners, but also the students, while they're young and they're um, getting their eyes keenly trained, um, to better understand why it is that some of the architecture in Somerville is so unique and so special. Um, and we hope that the students, by participating in this program and really carefully looking at a building in order to do a drawing or um, some kind of representation, will have a better trained eye. And when they walk down the street, that they will be more aware of some of those features and not just see every house is just a house. <laughs> um, so we're very lucky here in Somerville to Armand because we feel like we're blessed with a lot of eclectic um, collection of architectural um, styles and historical traditions and we want to maintain that, the commission. So each year we've had a good number of students and teachers who have been involved from the Somerville High School Art Department. And as I said, you'll be hearing from one of them in a little while. In December, the Commission establishes an awards subcommittee um, that seeks out property nominations and then reviews them. And then in January, the committee goes out um, and looks at those properties firsthand. It's generally the coldest day in the year that we choose to do this, not by choice, but that's what it ends up being. Um, and that's when we do, um, do the judging and actually come back and then make selections based on the site visits. And um, it's just wonderful to see how many of you have actually um, invested so much time and money and often quite a bit of research and physical labor into the um, work that you've done on your houses. And it's very inspiring. Um, it's also very encouraging to see how many of your neighbors are pleased and they are inspired by your work because many of them are the ones that have nominated you today. <laughs> Um, the award subcommittee then selects a handful of properties to either give a director or a preservation award to, generally up to six of those awards per year. Um, the difference between the director award is that means it's just not a designated property, it's just an older property, more than 50 years old, which is easy to come by in this city, um, but um, is an older property that's been worked on in a way that's sensitive to its original um, design and architecture. And whereas the preservation awards are for people that own what's called a designated historic property. Um, we take photographs of the properties that are chosen for an award and we provide those to the students at the Somerville High School. And that's generally the basis in which they do the artwork. Some of them choose to get um, even more interested and go out and visit the property as well. When the CAD students are involved, they went out and physically measured the property in order to do a very accurate drawing as well. Um, but this is all so that they can create an original piece of artwork. And I'm sure that you've hopefully seen over there the work that they've done. Um, so they use different techniques to do these representations of the properties. And this year, um, we have a plethora of ceramic tiles, which is pretty fun. <laughs> um, uh, in sometimes some years we have more drawings and um, not the tiles, but this year um, the teacher was able to inspire them to all um, do a tile and to donate them um, to this um, awards program. So we're very excited about that. Um, and then once the artwork is actually finished in the middle of April, then they give the artwork to us, and then I end up going and with the drawings and taking them to uh, Stanhope Framers in order to get them matted and framed. And the reason we go to Stanhope is because they are excellent at what they do, and they also give us a substantial discount on the work that they do. So we're pretty lucky, and as are you, they're receiving one to have this kind of work presented to you. And this, um, actually, one will go to the student for their portfolio, uh, that drawing, that is, framed and matted, and one will go to the owner. Um, the good news is that you will get one as an owner. The bad news is you won't get it potentially for another year because it becomes part of the mobile exhibit that we do um, that travels around the city in order to share your work with people all around the city in different venues. I'll talk about that later. Um, since there are no city funds that are given to us to do this kind of work, um, we didn't let that deter us. And so Century Bank um, has been the major supporter of this program for um, 15 years now. It's pretty amazing. Um, but Century Bank is a family-owned business, if you're not aware of that. And they do have never forgotten their roots in Somerville. 
Um, and so they have given us all the funds in order to do the matting and framing of all of the artwork that you see here today and in prior years as well. Um, so thank you. Um, so this is just a way of telling you that this is not the end of the, of the program tonight at the ceremony. It will keep going. We'll have this mobile exhibit. Um, we also have um, somebody, a freelancer, who has gone out and uh, interviewed some of the property owners to find out um, about your experience. And those um, articles or interviews will be in the local media. Uh, in the next couple of weeks in June. So look for those as well. Um, if you weren't contacted and would like to be, uh, let us know and we would love to have her come out and meet you. Um, the person is Marian Berkowitz and I don't think she's here yet because she has, oh, she is, wonderful. So Marian stands up. <laughs> Marian has been volunteering her time now for five or six years easily um, to do this and it's, it's just wonderful. And I know she gains a lot of excitement and pleasure in meeting with all of you because she finds it very inspiring to see the work that's been done and finding out a little bit more of the details behind it. So, um, so after this um, exhibit tonight, the, it will travel um, back to City Hall. Um, it'll be on the walls of Second Floor, which is where we have a lot of people and a lot of meetings that happen during the summer, so it's a great exposure for everybody there. Um, and the other venues that we've developed over time is uh, New Kitchen in Union Square um, and Century Bank's uh, Somerville branch on Fellsway West, uh, and here in the cafe at the Armory. So look for that places, and if you want to have any of your neighbors or family members that can't be here tonight come see it, by all means, encourage them to do that. Um, so I uh, want to also say that um, the, the, the people that are here tonight um, are some of which are owners and some of which are students, uh, but we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome and um, that you all sort of learn from this uh, evening. And I'd now like to ask the Somerville High School teacher that is his here tonight. There were supposed to be two, but the other teacher, unfortunately, um, who did the um, works with the computer art students has a young child who has 102 degree temperature and so she wasn't sure she could come tonight with a babysitter left behind. So Mei Chow um, is here. She's the ceramics teacher that I've been working with for several years now. So I'm going to ask her to come up and share a little bit of her perspective on the value of this program and her perspective on, on it. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Um, I just want to give, like, can we have all the high school students stand up, please? Uh, special thank you to all of you uh, for, for indulging me uh, every step of the way uh, from the beginning to the end and sticking with the process because it's such a heavy process uh, medium and you stuck with it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so this, I, I think it's more than the eight years that I participated in this act, this show. Um, but this is the one particular style that I enjoyed most doing. Uh, we at one point did birdhouses, and uh, that didn't go so well. So um, these tiles here, uh, I think, is uh, the most. Uh, I think all of my students appreciated this this particular process. Um, just to give you just a real brief um, uh, background on uh, the way this is uh, what I came about uh, this particular style, I've learned through Molly Hatch, who is a local artist, um, who then taught me the Mishima technique, which has the origins in Korea. And so we learned how to do the inlay um, of the underglaze and then transfer images uh, of, of the houses and whatever image that you wish to, to include. So this was a very successful uh, collection of art. And I'm really, really uh, super proud of all of you. Um, so um, should we start to do our group photo perhaps? Normal, normally what we would do is, oh, no, no, what, we, what we are going to do is a PowerPoint presentation to show each of the properties as winning an award tonight and have the owners come up um, and tell us a little bit about their observations, experience, whatever they want to share with people. But because the students all have to do their homework, and we certainly don't want to discourage that, and we appreciate your being here, um, we've agreed tonight to have the Somerville High School students come up for a group photo um, on their own, and then um, we're going to then go back to the PowerPoint presentation right after that, and then we'll do it by individual properties. Um, so, um, 
Should we call them? Up? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so we should call them up, and somebody's going to take a photograph. Uh, so should we have the owners too? It'd be great if the owners. Well, actually, why don't you, if you tell me which students are here, then then we can bring up those owners. That would be helpful. <laughs> I would think that the, all the owners could, could do the group photo shot with the kids. I think that's well, there's cool. a lot of owners here, so I think that's. Um, so why don't we have the students come up, and then you can tell us what tile you did. Do you do you know the addresses of the tile you did, and then we'll call those particular owners up. Because so, normally uh, what we would do is we'd sure. introduce you to the owner that you're doing get donating your tile okay, to. Okay, so I know that Nabil is not here yet. Okay. Or, I don't know if she's sure, so. Brennis is not here. Samantha, if you're Samantha, if you're still here, sure. mm -hmm. please come on up. Uh, is Kinder, if you're still here, please come on up. Yeah, some some of them already left. I know. I know uh, it's it's a tough. Um, it's we're competing with their time, and it's it's uh, it's hard, hard. So which one is she? Yeah. Which one is so we got Samantha. Okay. No, let's go to this. Oh, one. this I one can here. Do the properties okay. Ones. Sure. Okay. Uh, Samantha, Samantha. There she is. There she is. Okay, so 132 Perkins Street. Are you here? I know. Uh, okay, is yes. Kendar. Do you want to come up with your students and then get a picture and then you'll know who actually created your tile? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then we have 22 um, Billingham. 22, so that's uh, 22 Billingham Street? Yeah. Do we have Corinne still here? Corinne? Yes, come on up. We have. That's 49 um, Cedar Street? Yeah. We I know Megan Alan's Barnes. here. Megan Barnes, come on up. Mm -hmm. Karina, come on up. So why don't the owners stand near their student? How's that? So that'll give us some idea. <laughs> so Karina, that's for 22 Linden. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen, Jenna Choa, is she here yet still? <laughs> oh, you are here. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, what number is she? Yeah, and, and then uh, we yeah. have Lola. Well, Ather to oh, the Roundhouse. Yes, um, Lola. Come so on up. Somebody from the Roundhouse, at least one or two or three or four. <laughs> uh, why Come on, we George. Stand on the and Anna. There we go. I don't think, I don't see Bianca. No. Okay, Monica. That would be Flint Street, 14 Flint Street. Okay, Aaron, yeah. is Aaron in the... I don't see him either. Uh, Andrea Maldonado, come on up. Oh, great, that's 8 Mount Vernon, perfect. There you go. And I do not see Medalis, and I do not see Julia. Okay. Okay, I think we have the whole crowd. Okay. Yeah. So this is a pretty wide-angle lens we're going to need yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So do you want them to double up, or do you really want to? Why don't you get in the picture, oh, please? Sorry. <laughs> we need a drum roll, right? <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Okay, so. <laughs> um, we, as I mentioned, work with um, a lot of different people and one of them are local businesses for which we could not actually offer this tonight because of the budget. So they donate um, and I wanna make sure that people know that Red Bones um, in Davis Square, Mount Vernon Restaurant in East Somerville, uh, the Somerville Theater in Davis Square, uh, Winebow, uh, now been renamed the Boston Wine Company, <laughs> actually in Somerville as well, um, and uh, another company called Prospect Hill Beverages, which has, if you haven't tried the soda over there, that's historic. That was started by a family, a uh, Somerville family, back in the 1940s, and they've now continued that tradition of making it. So, so they're all responsible for donating the, um, uh, the food and refreshments tonight, so we want to thank them. Uh, and of course, Stanhope Framers and Century, as I mentioned. Okay, so let's start with the Director's Awards. Um, Alan is going to come up and help us actually honor each of the individual owners and their students if they're still here. And what we're going to be giving to you tonight, um, in addition to your artwork, if you're an owner, as I mentioned, your artwork is not is, is delayed gratification. <laughs> um, so they'll be part of this mobile exhibit. If you're a student and come up, I can actually give you your piece of artwork tonight um, if you did a drawing. So 
Um, and in addition to that, we have certificates to offer to people from the commission um, that actually shows all the different um, winning drawings. And then we also very nicely have from Senator Jalen, um, for our, our senator in Somerville, um, has done some wonderful state house certificates, which I'll read to you very quickly. So these are certificates that come from the commission that is actually signed by Alan and myself and uh, particularly significantly by the mayor, who usually is here for these ceremonies to give out these awards. Unfortunately, because there's so much going on in the city, he does Resistat meetings, I'm sure you know, um, throughout the city in the springtime, and he has one tonight in Ward 4. So he couldn't be here tonight. It's exactly the same timing. So he sends his regrets, but he has signed your certificate. Uh, this is a very large uh, uh, cert uh, citation, official citation, that comes from Senator Jalen. Um, and it says, the State Senate official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to, um, the first one is going to be Jonathan Wolf and Margaret Rosenberg, um, in recognition of receiving a 2019 Director's Award from the Somerville Historic Preservation Commission for the repairs and restoration of 22 Billingham Street. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that the citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to, and a copy thereof, transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And of course, it's then signed by the President of the Senate, the Clerk of the Senate, uh, our State Senator, Pat Dalen, um, and of course it has the official seal on it. So everybody will get one of these. Um, the only disadvantage is it doesn't fit in a file cabinet very well because it's huge. <laughs> but other than that, it's lovely. Um, okay, so we're gonna start um, with 22 Billingham Street. And so would the owners, um, which I just announced, um, come up, please. And then we're gonna talk about your property. Uh, is, Isa, is uh, Iskender here or Annabella um, here by any chance? Aha, uh -huh. I see somebody getting up. Wonderful, wonderful, great. So, um, you're getting an award for all the work that you put into your house, and so we would like you, and I have a, hmm, here it is. Uh, if you would share with the uh, rest of the audience here anything that you want to about the work that you did and experience or, uh, that you learned and why you do, certainly do it all over again, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, oh, well, thank you very much, first of all, and, and thank you, Iskander, for your drawing. It was really lovely to see that tonight. Um, we are relatively new to Somerville. We moved here two and a half years ago after living here 10 years before that, uh, when we were both in school. Um, we have fallen in love with the city, and we have fallen in love with our house, uh, which we know now from uh, the research that we've done was built in 1893. Um, and we've been researching all of the different people who have lived there and what the city was like over all of those different decades. And uh, there was a fire in the house at one point, and uh, there was restoration work after that, and um, different things that we discovered along the way, just the style of the exterior and things that were under the shingles, the first layer of shingles uh, when, we, <laughs> you know, when we first got into it, and, um, and decisions that we made along the way in order to bring back, we hope, um, the, the original character um, and, you know, just a fitting, a fitting uh, location and context for the house as it originally was. So, do you want to add anything? And also, if, if we move on to the next slide, we can see that we see the before and, and see there's quite a transformation that you have accomplished there, so thank you. Yeah, we were able to save one original stained glass window, which you can see in the second floor front, mm -hmm. uh, sort of on the left-hand side. Um, so we were really glad that we found that in the basement and saved it from completely rotting out and got it back in the window in good shape now. So We like that window. <laughs> and thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, so here is your certificates um, for that. And <laughs> wait, wait. Get a picture? Um, um, and Iskander, you did actually a tile, right? Did you do a tile, Iskander? Yes. yes, you did a tile, right? Don't be modest. You did a tile, right? Okay. So what we did, 
<laughs> what we did for the students is they, as I mentioned, uh, donated the tiles that they did, which was uh, obviously helpful because it's hard to replicate them. With the drawings, we can actually do a, a copy of them and then frame them. Um, tiles is more difficult, and it was more difficult this year to figure out how to give that to you as actually as well, because, so we use shadow boxes this year. We've never done this before, but we decided that would be a good way for you to hang it, or if you want to take it out and make it into a trivet or something else, you can do that too, but, <laughs> um, but for you, um, just so you don't totally lose track of all that work that you did and how nicely it turned out, we actually made a copy of your tile and put it in a frame, so I want to give you that. So you want to hold it up? Thank you. Alan already do the picture? <laughs> want to do the picture? Okay, thank you. Great. <laughs> okay, so the next property, thank you. That's wonderful. Um, and you can see up here, actually, there was an honorable mention as well. I know Annabella is not here tonight, so. Um, but she did another uh, wonderful tile, and so we wanted to give her honorable mention for the work that she did. It's also interesting to see the, the, uh, the different interpretations that one does of properties. Um, okay, so the next one is gonna be 49 Cedar Street. Okay, so Alan Peterson I know is here, so if he could come up, and um, that also means that if Corinne McKellar is still here, um, Megan Barnes I don't think was Megan here, okay. Oh, wonderful. There she is. Okay. <laughs> uh, and lastly, Jennifer Oshie Oshoa. Oshoa? I'm sorry if I mispronounce your names. <laughs> oh, wonderful, Jennifer. Um, so we had a hard case here because we have two honorable mentions, and it's kind of interesting to see, as I was telling Alan, the students get to choose what picture that they want to do and what sort of inspires their interest. So in this case, um, Alan's house <laughs> inspired several people's interests, including Megan, who just did this um, drawing very recently um, in order to, um, to convey it, and she did an excellent job. So Alan, do you want to share some information about what you did? Alan has done other uh, uh, properties in the city and um, did a wonderful job, so. Thank you. Well, it's an honor. Um, to be here tonight, and uh, really, it's really a great feeling, and uh, happy to be a part of this, and I want to thank all the young high school artists. You did a great job. Um, this particular house for me was really, uh, has a unique story in a way, because it sort of uh, evolved, it exposed itself as we started working on the house. There was no uh, original intent, honestly, to go in, uh, to put any extra effort to preserve something because I really wasn't sure what was there. The house was covered with asbestos shingles. And um, this particular house is on Cedar Street, which as many of you know, is, has become quite the promenade. You know, uh, people going to the red line in the morning or coming home from work or going to the Kennedy School, you have a lot of pedestrian traffic up and down Cedar Street. So the story goes that I hired a company that uh, specializes in removing asbestos shingles. It's a hazardous waste and you have to hire a, a specific company to do that. And as they were working on the house, um, I had left the job site for a few hours, I don't remember why, and uh, the next thing I know, I started to get a phone, I got a phone call from one of my workers on the job site, and he was kind of excited uh, and nervous because people were stopping to take photographs of the house, like a lot of people. So this went on for like two days, and I'm like, you know, what's going on? And um, then people started coming up to me on their way home from work. And they sent me emails. I had my sign in the front with my email address and phone number and such to ask me if I would please try to preserve as much as possible the original house. And so what was revealed, honestly, were all these shadows. You can't, if you look at the bay in the front of the house, you, well, you can see that's the asbestos shingles in red. 
And then what was revealed were all these what are called dentals, which are lots of ornamentation work, and easily four different types of shingle patterns, of cedar shingles. So the house really had, you know, was quite an image, you know, that was revealed. So I did my best. We did our best. My guys, I, I want to thank them. They did a great job. And I, there's still carpenters in the world. Don't worry. Thankfully. Because uh, these houses were built by carpenters, wood, wood people who are artisans with wood. So we had a lot of fun. Did our best. Thank you yeah, very much. You did a wonderful job. And it's uh, a, a very prominent street, so a lot of people go down it and notice it. And it really, it, what, what, one of the reasons what we really love to see this work done is that um, when it enhances the streetscape, it inspires other people on the same street to think about their own properties and what they want to do to invest in it. So you've certainly been an inspiration to many others on Cedar Street. So, <laughs> um, so um, Megan, uh, do you want to share anything about your drawing? I know it took you some time to do it, but you did a wonderful job, and that's what we're going to show next is, oh, there you go, the drawing that Megan has done to um, capture the, the charm of the house. Um, and we have a certificate for you. Do you have anything you want to say? Um. <laughs> Megan is a, a senior, I believe, and you're yeah. going on to... Suffolk. Suffolk, okay. <clears throat> and you're going to pursue your art career or not? Mm -hmm. I'm pursuing fine arts. Fine arts. Okay, great. So, yeah. did you learn something from this project? <laughs> Just to look at the health very carefully and look at the different perspectives of every part of it and make sure everything is perfect and just see all the um, different aspects of the house and how different every house is from each other. It was a good learning process. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's exactly the kinds of goals we have. Do either of you want to share anything? Because you did tiles, um, actually. Um, right? Do you want? So... Uh, Connie, um, Corinne, excuse me, um, your tile is here, um, so that's, you, you enjoy doing that, and you chose that for a particular reason, I'm sure. Um, I live pretty close to Cedar Street, mm -hmm. um, off Morrison Ave, um, hmm. back by the Brown School, so when I saw the address, I thought it would be fun to do something that was, like, pretty close to where I live, mm -hmm. um, and it actually kind of looks like my house, it's, like, a similar color, um, so... I thought that was cool. Great. Yeah, no, it's a really nice job. Um, so you're Jennifer? Okay. Jennifer, do you have anything to share about yours? Because you did a really nice job as well. <laughs> this was a hard choice for us to pick one. <laughs> um, I was kind of intrigued of how the structure of the house was. Can you talk into the microphone? Because, okay, there you go. I was okay. very intrigued of how the structure of the house was, and I think it was very unique, so that's why I chose it. And I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to paint it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the paint colors that you chose, Alan, was, was very much um, <laughs> of interest to people. It makes it stand out on the street as well as into the students, so thank you. This is wonderful. Okay, so we have awards for each of you. Did you already get the picture, Ellen? Yeah. Okay, great. So thank you all for being here tonight. And I, I'm going to have to find your... Oh, I'm just realizing that we have a little bit... Here it is. Uh, here's Emma. I'm sorry. Jennifer, here we go. And Iskander... Um, I just found your certificate that I wasn't able to find before. So are you still here, hopefully? Did you leave? Hmm. Okay, well, we have it. Oh, there you are. Good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on to um, Linden, 22 Linden Avenue. Uh, are the owners at 22 Linden... Um, Do 
Denise Price. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Denise is um, uh, had some help on this house, I think, but Denise was certainly the driving force, as I understand it. Um, okay. And so the students that would have done this property are uh, da, 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 sorry. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, Karina Morales uh, and Azuna Martinez. Okay, Martinez. Okay. <laughs> so maybe Denise, you want to share some um, background on, on the house and what you learned. You've done some other work as well in the city um, as a. You're also a real estate agent, I believe. Yes. yes. Okay. So let me. Oh, here it is. First off, thank you. Um, the artwork is just really incredible. It was unexpected to see um, all of the talented tiles and drawings over there. So thank you, everybody, for um, participating. As you can see, um, when we first bought 22 Linden, um, there was this little jet out on the left side. And that definitely, we think, was built in the 1930s, um, basically built on and built on and built on over the years. And um, I started taking it apart and realized that the original house, which we think was about eight, is on the 1852 map, um, is the house on the right. So you can see we took it all apart and um, exposed the original Greek Revival house. And in the demolition, um, the gentle demolition, um, we exposed the original color up on the top peak there, which was a nice, lovely gray. And um, we were creating two units out of it, so we maintained the first house and um, created a, a townhouse. So an the original house was, was put back together, and we put um, a mirroring house on the side, which you'll see soon. Oh, yeah. so that's the finished. <laughs> So we mirrored the, the front house on the back and um, the back house on this left side goes on to Gilson Terrace. And Gilson Terrace, come to find out, the house was built by Nathaniel Gilson. <laughs> and this is more detail than you probably want. But um, he died in 1886 and um, his wife, Delilah, actually, developed all of the little houses around there on Gilson Terrace. Hmm. So after hmm. he died, he left her the land, and she actually became a little land baroness. So, um, so we felt it was really appropriate to maintain the dignity of the house, put it back to the way that it was originally, and give it a new life. So that's the story. I think, are the owners here tonight as well? Or I Is think Dan they, here? Uh, he was planning Dan to come, was so here. he RSVP'd. Oh, oh, that's too bad. He <laughs> was here. Yeah, so. he did RSVP yeah. to say he was coming, so that's too bad. Yeah. So, good. Um, yeah, it was a pretty major transformation on the street. There's no question about it, and it's really, it's quite amazing. <laughs> so, thank you so much. So, um, Karina? Share any thoughts about doing why you chose this house? You don't have to be verbose, but just. <laughs> um, I just thought that. Sorry, I'm kind of sick. <laughs> I just thought like the house had such like a modern look, and I just loved how it looked, and I thought it was just very beautiful, like gorgeous house. So mm -hmm. I was just like, this would be like really interesting and fun to try to cre recreate on a tile. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you did a wonderful job. It's hard to do, too, because it's actually, um, it has so many different features to it and such. So <laughs> you did a really nice job. So thank you so much. And um, did you learn something by looking at the house and others on the, as opposed to others on the street? <laughs> well, mm, I learned a couple of few things, like, well, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, a little shy. Mm -hmm. No, I like the fact that you emphasize the, the black. I mean, and then you picked up on the light pole there and such. And it's always interesting to see the features that, that students actually um, highlight. And sometimes it's the parked car, which is less appealing. But, <laughs> but the street light is wonderful that she put in. So thank you so much. Okay.
So 76 School Street. Um, I know that the owner is here, Sebastian, um, is here, and your wife, am I going to come too? She was certainly part of this, I'm sure, if only um, tolerating you for... <laughs> okay, here you go. Um, all right, she's going to be shy. Okay. Um, and then the um, person, the students, I don't know if you're here, um, uh, Mathieu Garcia and Samuel Jean uh, Francois, are either of you here? Okay. Okay, so Sebastian is an architect, um, so I know he can talk a little bit about what he did and why and <laughs> what he learned, so thank you. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for this recognition. I'm, I'm honored, and uh, I uh, congratulate the Somerville Preservation, Historic Preservation, because uh, I think it's, it's quite important to preserve these unique buildings. Uh, the combination of old and new, and uh, that kind of gives a character to, to the city. And, uh, and I was very happy to be uh, able to uh, purchase this building. Um, it's a building with a lot of character. Um, and I, for me, I would say the, the three most important things uh, to preserve of the building, well, one, of course, exterior. But sometimes I feel that um, we forget about the value, the historic value and the architectural value of, of the interior and also the use. So. Um, I like the exterior, uh, very strong exterior of, of, uh, of brick, which I try to be just very respectful and, uh, and try to, de to do the least as possible and just um, restore it. And then, but the inside, um, it's, it's amazing, the interior <laughs> of the space. The first time I, I went in, um, it's a building that is not designed for people. It's a building that is designed for machines. So. Um, the, the amazing thing for me is that I know that if I want to do this building uh, as a new building from scratch, I wouldn't be able to do it today um, because of the construction systems and, and everything else. So what I wanted to, uh, uh, to take advantage of is the interior elements uh, that the building has. It has a, a huge uh, skylight, um, which I uh, preserved, and uh, I tried to... Uh, make a homage um, around the skylight on the different spaces. And also, there is a, there is a bridge, which you see right there. Um, so that also was an important element that I want to, to uh, take advantage of. So what I created is a loft. Um, it's just a, like a wooden bridge that you can still see the wheels, and you can remember that that bridge used to move along the whole space. Um, so, I mean, when you have a you find a building with so much character. Um, uh, if you are respectful to it, I think it's, it becomes fairly simple. The renovation it was it was a lot of work, uh, but definitely worth it. So thank you very much. Um, it's very inspiring to see buildings like these get reused because the city of Somerville, like many others, has some older buildings that no longer have a use that's um, very uh, dated or that is very useful. So uh, converting it to another use and not demolishing it and throwing it away into landfills that we no longer have space for um, and being environmentally sensitive as well as architecturally sensitive is hugely important to us. So thank you for doing that. Um, I think the, um, the only sad part of this story that I can see is that when you designed this building and the space and such, you were going to have your architectural offices in there. And I heard that, <laughs> that you found a tenant that actually wanted the whole building. So that displaced you and all the work that you'd put into thinking it was going to be yours. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Well, we, we were there a month, so we, we had a chance to enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, the the lease that you uh, that they're paying is is making it worth your while. So, <laughs> um, Sebastian also has a practice in Mexico, so we're thrilled that he's here tonight. So he goes back and forth all the time. But um, thank you very much for what you did, and it's really wonderful for the streetscape anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so again, to remind you, the preservation awards are for houses or properties that are designated historic by the commission over a period of time. They've been surveyed um, and have gone through a process um, for by the Board of Aldermen, now the city councilor, and the um, 
uh, the mayor and signing off on. And these people are actually come through our office, the Historic Preservation Commission, work with the staff and the commission if they want to make any alterations to the exterior. They don't require to, but if they should decide to, then we uh, work with them in, in doing that. So it's done in a sensitive way to the historic character. So we're going to start off with uh, 36 Atherton Street. This is alphabetical order. <laughs> um, so Atherton, 36 Atherton Street, as you will quickly see, is well known because it's known as the Roundhouse. And if anybody here doesn't live in the city, uh, maybe you're not familiar with it. But if you do, I think most people uh, know it as the Roundhouse, and it is quite beloved. So if the owners, George and Anna Seropoulos, can come up, and any of their family members that are willing to accompany them, <laughs> Um, as well as uh, the student, uh, Nabila, I don't think is here. Is Lola here? I think she is Lola, right? She was here. Did she leave already? Okay. Um, and Max Nadeau, I don't think he is here. I know that he was studying. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about this notable house, which <laughs> you've owned for a number of years and have finally almost finished. Thank you. Mm. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is George Seropoulos, and I'm Anna Seropoulos, and we are the proud owners of 36 Atherton Street. Mm. Um, so we've, owned, we've been in Somerville for many years. Uh, I, ma I married into Somerville. George <laughs> has been in Somerville since he was about six years old, mm -hmm. so he knows everyone in every street and every building. <laughs> and everyone seems to know him. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved in a little later when we married, uh, not too much later, we were like 19, and mm -hmm. we've been in Somerville ever since. Um, we, the only reason we have this house is uh, we purchased it from a dear friend, Alice Magnatis, who no longer is with us, but um, she purchased the home 1966, and she purchased it because she loved it and she wanted to restore it. And somewhere along the line, she fell upon George and he promised he would restore it. So we purchased it and we restored it for over 13 years, <laughs> slowly. We lived up the street. We, uh, we've been in Somerville. So um, the only reason we restored it is because George himself is very stubborn and very patient, <laughs> and he does the work uh, pretty much alone uh, with his crew, but he takes pride, and every step of the way, he just, um, he's like a kid in a candy store. He just loves it. So I'm not saying anything else. This is restored because of George, and we're just having a lot of fun. When we started out, we started naming, I just have to say this much, we started naming the rooms. This is Christina's room. This is Stratus's room. This They're is children. Alice's room. <laughs> the main room is Alice. Yeah. That's the name. And my son said to me back then, you realize by the time you're done, no one's going to be living with you. <laughs> and um, anyway, they, it's the two of us in this little home. And um, they're always welcome and they always visit. But I'm going to pass it on to George now. Thank you. Are you going to share why you, uh, you and Alice became good friends? Um, there is a longer story here, certainly. Well, I, I actually introduced them, so. <laughs> well, uh, there's a little side story. That I began mm -hmm. in 1971 when my dad met a lady that lived on Central Street, happened to also be Greek, friend of Alice. My dad met Alice. Uh, she wanted him to do some work on our house over the years. He did work for both of the ladies. We kind of lost touch for a while in the 80s. Got to know each other a little bit, lost touch again. Caught up in the late 90s. Uh, we, we, the, we roof was, the roof was leaking. Uh, badly. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was leaking because Alice um, had lots of ambitions of what she was going to do, but she was an older woman at that point on her own. And um, I, I also have to share that she 
purchased the house, um, fortunately, because it was um, doomed to be uh, demolished. And people at that time in the 1960s thought, oh, what an eccentric, hideous house. Why would you want that? So let's just get rid of it. So she saved it from demolition. So that's a very important piece there. Uh, and then George actually um, helped her save it from even further um, degradation and deterioration by, he is a contractor, somehow that detail hasn't come out, but <laughs> he has his own business and he does this for a living. And so this was his labor of love for his own property um, with Anna. And so he's been working on it painstakingly in his spare time. But he came in originally to fix a rubber roof, as I recall, that I alerted him to that we needed to do something very quickly because the, <laughs> the water was coming into the house. And then, then there's a, a lot of history after that. <laughs> Yeah, we, we purchased the home in 2006. As soon as we picked it up, uh, became owners, the very first thing we did is we cleared out the yard. People that don't know about the house or haven't been by the house, that picture doesn't really tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You can barely see the third floor from mm -hmm. the vegetation. Mm -hmm. It looked like the Amazon rainforest was built around it. <laughs> we cleared the lot. It took 36 days mm -hmm. to clear the lot with a full crew. We're talking about a lot, all by hand, because we had to be very careful not to damage the detail because the vegetation had grown into the house. Fixed the roof, first thing we did, then we started the inside. We sat there many of hours staring at details, rooms, walls, ceilings, floors, doors, etc. Figure out how to tackle it. We started one piece at a time. There's not a piece of the house, inside or out, that hasn't been restored, rebuilt, duplicated by hand. Mm -hmm. Everything was done by hand, and the outside doesn't do justice to the inside. Uh, there's no way to describe the inside, mm -hmm. and the finished product is something else. Uh, we have pictures. At some point, they will be shown. <laughs> he he says this, and I asked him to bring pictures yeah. tonight to, so, to sort of satiate a lot of people's curiosity about the inside. And we're still working on the fact that we'd love for um, interior tours to be given at some point in time. But we're, we, we respect the fact that they're living there and that it's going to take time. How and private his wife is. <laughs> and how private Alice is. But I can tell you this. Every detail has been documented by photo, by video, by a, a write-up, a description of who did it, how many hours he spent on it, what material he used to do it, etc. So everything has been, and it will at some point come out. We're just not ready for it yet. <laughs> we're still, we're still. That's right. That's right. It took you 13 years to restore it, so we'll be patient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the home is completed. The two of us are living in there. The outside. The home has been restored, but not the landscape, the fencing, the driveway and everything. All that will be done in time. I know everybody wants it done yesterday. It won't take 13 years. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it's going to take a little time and it will be done right. Well, it's wonderful that it's now being lived in because Alice was never able to do that. And yeah. so it's been restored enough so that it's very habitable. Um, and we look forward to the time that you're willing to share the interior with us. <laughs> um, and, but it's wonderful that you've done the work that you have as painstakingly as it is. So again, thank you. And here is your certificate for that. <laughs> um, also, the several students, needless to say, have chosen to do this as a representation. So um, you will actually be getting the tiles as well. Um, I, I do want to point out to everybody that there are a lot of tiles over there that have been donated by the students um, who did the tiles, so they're not taking them home. And that's why, as I mentioned before, we took, um, made copies and framed them. But if you're willing to, um, to purchase any of them um, by donation, we suggested um, a small donation of $10. That would be great that we replenish the art supplies at the uh, ceramics department. Um, you're certainly welcome to do that. But by the end of tonight, we would love for a lot of those tiles to disappear into the hands of the owners or other people that find them intriguing. So thank you again, George and Anna, thank you um, again. for being And for thank you to our family that is here supporting <laughs> yes, us as well. <laughs> They've been very patient. Yes, they have. <laughs> okay, so these are the, um, uh, the drawings that were done. Again, um, for obvious reasons, perhaps, the Roundhouse attracted a lot of student interest. And so uh, not only did we have tiles done, but we had drawings done. And it was a very hard choice, but um, Lola's was chosen um, to be framed and matted. 
um, but their honorable mention of Bianca's was also quite lovely, um, and it's hanging up over there as well. So I'm sorry that neither of them are here tonight. As I mentioned, this is a tough time of year for students and exams and end of school and such, um, but they will certainly be getting um, copies of this. So um, the tiles have already been shown, I think. Is that right? Okay, great. Um, but it, it was a fun house, I think, for them to do, and obviously it inspired a lot of uh, interest. So thank you. So moving on, um, we'll go to 14 Flint Street. Um, and the owners here, I know, are here. Where was Keith uh, Fallon? I saw was here originally. Okay. There he is. Hi, Keith. Um, and then of the students, uh, is Aaron Moreno or Monica Correa still here? No, they were the before. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Keith Fallon to tell us a little bit about his experience in doing this house and anything he wants to share. Um, well, thank you very much for the award and, and for the artwork. It looks great. It's really nice. Um, the house was in very bad shape yes. when I bought it. Um, we, it hadn't been taken care of. It had been neglected for, for uh, a number of years on the inside and outside. So we removed the aluminum siding and... Uh, we tried to restore it as best we could. Monica, do you want to say anything about your, um, why you chose to work on this? Um, I chose this house because I really found how the door was all the way on one side of the house interesting instead of in the middle like many other houses are. And the um, round window at the top was really cool. Yeah, the round ocular window at the at the center is pretty in, unusual. And when you decided to take on this project, it, you knew it was in very tough shape. Did it take you about the amount of time that you originally thought it was going to, Kevin, or did? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't know it was a historic home when I bought it, so I was a bit surprised. <laughs> Big surprise, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a pleasant good. one too. <laughs> For the most part, Christy was a great home. Yeah. Okay, great. You, okay, and how long did it take you to actually do the work? I I think just under five months. And five months. And I think you mentioned to me that you thought it was going to be three months, and it took a little Normally longer. it's about three. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not so bad. Well, thank you for persisting with it, and you did a really nice job, and it's pretty amazing how it enhances the streetscape. Um, Flint Street is actually one of our more recent local historic districts, um, and so this is one of several on the street. Um, Atherton Street that we just showed before, of course, is actually part of the Spring Hill uh, local historic districts where there's a lot of properties um, that are significant, including the old Carr Schoolhouse, which is an element elementary school built in the 1898, I think it was, um, has been converted to residential, but a lot of other houses on Atherton Street as well um, in the immediate area are part of the historic district. Yours is a little bit smaller. So thank you again for doing the work. And yours. Did you do, oh, you're, are you an honorable mention one? Is that one? Yeah. Okay, so the, only the, um, yeah. the, not the honorable mention didn't get framed. So. <laughs> but we should have, have a certificate that I'll get to you later because I'm not finding it right away right now, but we do definitely have one for you. So, great. Thank you so much. Sure. Wonderful. And I think Alan's going to take a photo. Hmm? Um, next, we're going to have 8 Mount Vernon Street. Um, and I know the owners are here, both husband and wife. And... Um, as either Brennis or Andrea, uh, I think Andrea is here, right? And um, great. Uh, and Brennis, are you here as well? No. Barbara and Furman. Going to ask you to speak. This is actually um, not their first time up here. <laughs> they won a, a preservation award from us back in 2007, I think it was, um, for the work that you did um, after you bought the property in 2003. They did a lot of work on it, um, but that wasn't enough, and they decided they wanted to do even more work and really enhance it even further by um, dealing with the exterior cladding. And so they did an amazing amount of work. And Furman, I believe you did a lot of the work yourself. So. Um, Share that with us, please. Yes, he did. Um, <laughs> so the, the house was, was built in 1850. Um, we bought it in 2003, and it was um, it just in terrible shape. It had a lot of um, water infiltration in the basement. Um, so we had to deal with some of those issues first. Um, and we didn't, we did, we've done a lot inside, an incredible amount inside, um, it is a two-family house, um, 
originally was a one family, um, but um, then we tackled the, the outside, um, which my husband Fermin did with one other person. He did the entire um, clavards and uh, I'll let him talk. He restored all of them. Well, uh, yes. Um, the whole process was uh, being uh, really hard work from the beginning in 2003. And in 2014, we finally made uh, the project for uh, outside the house. It was thoroughly uh, intense for at least three months. And, you know, I, I did myself. Another person helped me to do that. That was a very intense. And, and, but finally, we, uh, we finished and we, we used the good material for the whole house. And, and so we are proud to keep the house. Uh, for you know, a society, a society in Somerville, uh, that helped uh, somehow to uh, to make that kind of project. Thank you. Um, so he restored the columns in the front, uh, the porch, all of the windows um, restored, and I think there are 33 of them. <laughs> That's significant. Um, I helped very little with that, but <laughs> a moral support. Um, and then the, all of the, the molding as well, because the wood was in, in terrible shape as well outside. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it's been, all that work has started in the 2003. So. <laughs> it's a long haul. It's almost as long as the roundhouse, actually. I don't know, it's, actually, it is 16 years, so I think you just got beat out. <laughs> um, but you did a wonderful job, and we're very pleased to give you a second award for this very major undertaking that you've done on, on the exterior cladding. It makes a big difference on the streetscape. Um, it's Mount Vernon Street, again, is a, um, a local historic district. It's right on the border of Charlestown and Somerville, um, so it um, gets a lot of attention and particularly now with Assembly Row. Um, and so this really um, is a great source of inspiration to a lot of people over there. And we're always excited when we see people in East Somerville investing so much in their property, so it's great. Um, so we um, also, Andrea, do you want to say a few words um, about why you chose? Um, yeah, I just chose it because I like the color, and I also decided to paint it in a different way. I chose many colors, as you can see. Um, mm -hmm. the one mm -hmm. And... I really have to go, so... That's okay. No, that's great. And <laughs> no, it's always fun to see when, when, when students mm -hmm. actually um, change the color of houses and they get inspired. So thank you so much, Andrea. <laughs> Last but certainly not least is 132 Perkins Street. Um, uh, the owners are here, I know, um, or the, I should say the developer. Okay, uh, so let me see. So this one, again, it attracted a fair amount of um, attention. Um, and so is Samantha Itro, uh, Helen Garcia Vequez, Vequez uh, Migdalas uh, Penelvert, and Julia Convalis de Amarillo here. Any of the students? Okay, so which one are you? Samantha, great, wonderful. Okay, so um, I'm gonna ask, um, I guess you're one of several people that actually worked on this property, so if you wanna talk to us a little bit, are you John, right? I am John. Okay, all right. So can John, can you wanna talk? Elon's not here tonight, right? Uh, he was here, he had to go. He had to leave, okay, so let me, oh, actually you need a microphone, don't you, excuse me. <laughs> My name is John Tapalis, and this is my partner, Jerry McDonough. Uh, what's important here is we came to Somerville about three years ago and started doing projects. And we picked up 132 Perkins Street, I believe it was about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And we had no idea that we were looking for an award or we're gonna win an award and we're very honored to receive this award. But we just went by about our business, doing the work that we do, and working very closely with uh, Sarah White, uh, Hans Jensen, Christy Chase, and just the different departments and staffs in the city. It 
this project and many of our projects turned out very successful. Like I said, we weren't even, we had no idea we were coming up here for an award. <laughs> we heard about it a month or two ago. Um, so 132 Perkins Street, we purchased that, this house and when we first purchased it, it was um, just very dilapidated. It was just basically ruined inside. The floors were unlevel, the ceilings, the walls, everything, uh, the windows. It was, I think it's an 1865 structure. Um, and we just went to work. And Jerry, Jerry's an expert. He got right down dirty, right, right in the field with all the guys. And we worked together and completely gutted and renovated the house. Took it down to its studs, rewired it, plumbed it, insulated it, board plaster, shored up foundations, um, and just completely started to rebuild the structure. Um, what's also important is the back of the structure has an addition to it. And we worked very closely with Sarah White and Christy Chase. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to make a statement by keeping the original structure. And if we were to put any addition on it, it had to be dissimilar. It had to be completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. um, And that's about it. I'm not going to take anyone's <laughs> time up. Um, and I'm, oh, we're on it, and we, we, we love working in the city. We're, we're doing many projects. And now that I know that we are up for awards <laughs> like this, um, uh, uh -huh, there you go. I gave it 110% on 42 Bow Street, and uh -huh. I will continue to do well. That's right. Thank you. All right, so lessons learned, everybody. This is if you get an award and nice dinner and uh, certificates, you can do really good work here. So I hope there's other reasons to do it too. But yes, they have done um, a number of other projects as well, and um, they weren't done at the time. And of course, we uh, will look at those for next year as well. They'll probably well, be nominated. You. So you've done a wonderful job, and thank you. It's really made a big difference. Perkins Street um, streetscape is greatly enhanced by the work that you've done there. And, and that was the addition uh, on the left side, which is completely different from the original structure. And that, oh, one more thing I would like to say about my partner, Elon Sassoon. Mm -hmm. He's a tree fanatic. I just about to say that. Exactly he is right. a tree fanatic. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, Johnny, that tree right there on the left hand side, we're not going to touch it. I said, Elon, <laughs> it's gonna. It's almost on the house. It's almost right in the way of where the addition's going. And he looked at me and he said, "We're never touching it. We're gonna trim it up, but we're keeping it." Uh -huh. So every every house that we yeah. do. Yeah. I definitely agree. That takes it. This city needs to keep every tree that it possibly can. We preserve not only houses, but also trees these days, and large trees like that. And that is one of things that I was going to point out, and, and when you go by there, is that the landscaping that was done on this site is also phenomenal, uh, in addition to the preservation work that they did on the properties and the new construction. So we appreciate that, and um, that puts you in good stead for other awards as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, Samantha? Do you want to say anything about why you chose the house that you did and what attracted your attention? Um, I was really attracted to the sleekness of the house and I also got to learn a lot about carving into the new medium which I had never worked with before, so uh -huh. that was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. No, it's just awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so here we have an award. Okay, so that um, concludes the um, presentation of the various awards for each of you. Um, I do want to, uh, again, recognize um, the people that were very much um, contributed to this, as well as, as Senator Jalen, as I mentioned, who's provided those wonderful certificates. Um, and I also encourage you to go take a look at the tiles now um, and see if there's any over there that appeal to you and that you might find a place for in your home if you own it, or even if you don't. <laughs> and Because um, the students did such wonderful work there. It would be a shame not to see those tiles go to people that can enjoy them as well. Um, thank you so much for all that you've done in contributing to Somerville's streetscape and um, preservation. 
And uh, I do hope that you'll think about coming to the remaining uh, events that we have in now June, <laughs> Preservation Month, uh, which is on June 8th. We actually have a Jane's Walk in Winter Hill and Gilman's uh, Square area. Uh, on the 16th, on Sunday, we're doing an East Somerville walking tour. And on the 24th, I think it is, um, we are doing um, showing a Jane uh, Jacobs film. Uh, Jane Jacobs is a very important urban activist that helps save uh, Greenwich Village in New York City. So um, if you don't know better, I suggest you come. Um, all of these events are free, um, very much accessible, uh, and we'd love to see you there and pass it on to other people. Again, thank you so much. I uh, hope you'll visit uh, the local businesses and show your support to them as well. And good night. Thank you.